Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On November the 1st, 2011, the United States Supreme Court will hear oral argument in a case called Rayburg versus Polk. This is a case involving the question of whether the chief investigator of a prosecuting attorney who allegedly testifies falsely at a grand jury proceeding, which led to the prosecution uh, of the plaintiff, is entitled to what is called absolute immunity. In order to get at that, we need to say a word or two about what Section 1983 is and what immunity is. Section 1983 is a very important federal civil rights statute act enacted ages ago, actually, in 1871 by the 42nd Congress in order to provide a damages remedy against state and local government officials who violate a person's constitutional rights. Over the years since that time, the Supreme Court has also held that certain defendants are protected either by what's called absolute immunity, which if successfully asserted means they're out of the case altogether, or qualified immunity, which means ultimately that they're protected against damages liability, even though it may take a longer amount of time. The privileged characters who are entitled to absolute immunity are legislators, judges, and prosecutors. Everybody else is entitled or protected by qualified immunity. But there is an interesting twist because it turns out that the Supreme Court also held that witnesses who testify at criminal trials are protected by absolute immunity, which brings us to this particular issue. This case involved, as I said, a chief investigator for a prosecutor's office who testified falsely, allegedly, at a grand jury proceeding. The question is, is he considered to be the equivalent of a witness, or is he considered to be the equivalent of a, a, a law enforcement officer in general who might not be protected by qualified immunity for certain, by absolute immunity, excuse me, for certain kinds of conduct. There's a, there are two cases in the United States Supreme Court which go in different directions on this issue, which is why the court granted cert here, together with a split in the circuits on the issue. This case is an important case, primarily because if the Supreme Court says that this chief investigator who testified allegedly falsely at the grand jury proceeding is protected only by qualified immunity, that may raise serious questions about the secrecy of grand jury proceedings, which is traditionally a very important concern. For this reason, and perhaps others that we don't have time to get into, I suspect the Supreme Court is going to hold that this chief investigator is indeed protected by absolute immunity here and not qualified immunity.